Welcome to Romancing the Sea. Who's in love? <laughs> and when it comes to romance, the seahorse is too good to be true. They were bred to rock romance because they are descended from the steeds of the gods. The ancients knew that those breakers foaming across the ocean were actually the manes of Neptune's chargers racing to some divine destination. Ladies, if only we could be seahorses. We could toss out our chick flicks and our romance novels and live a dream. <laughs> Seahorses are mostly monogamous, but they don't live together. They hold overlapping territories, and every morning the female visits her mate in the overlap. The very sight of her so thrills him he changes color. She follows his lead. They rush together. Slow motion. Seahorses don't swim well. <laughs> Meet nose to nose and bow their heads. He circles her, glowing with passion and humming or clicking a serenade. They clasp tails and dance round and round a makeshift maypole. After an hour or two of non-stop frolic, he tells her she's a goddess, that every instant away from her is agony. She winks, eyes his pouch, calls him a stud. And then they go their separate ways and spend the day lounging around, sucking up sh shrimp in a seagrass or a mangrove swamp or coral reef resort. And the next day, they do it all over again. Every couple of weeks, when his pouch is free, they go through the same routine and then he starts pumping tail thrusts like a YouTube fool. <laughs> that bucking cleans his pouch for action and fills the water with hormones. When the timing and positioning are sheer perfection, she dumps 50 to 1500 eggs into his pouch and swims away. She, he sinks, fertilizes the eggs, does a little belly dance to settle them into the folds of his pouch where they will receive ample oxygen and nourishment. And when the sea folds are fully and perfectly formed, little seahorses, this heroic father times his own contractions for up to 12 hours. Then, he jackknifes a few times oh my gosh. and sends <laughs> <laughs> and sends fry flying in all directions. Oh my gosh. That honeydew done, he takes a break while the little ones float off to feed the neighbors. <laughs> An aquarium octopus in New Zealand will take your picture for $2. Another Einstein figured out how to remove a childproof safety cap without reading the directions. You heard me, not a word. Octopuses are also dramatic characters with surprising ways of letting us know how they feel. When a night watchwoman shone her flashlight on a sleeping octopus, she got a face full of siphon squirt on her next round. <laughs> in another facility, an unsatisfied diner looked her handler in the eye as she crammed the offending meal down the drain. Octopuses 
love to play with balls and aquarium bubbles, Legos and coconuts. They blush for joy, blanch in terror, boil black with fury. A visit from a human friend can lift some species' eyes up on stocks. Watch this end. <gasps> As an amorous male works the bases with a hot honey, his third heart skips beats. Oh. <laughs> that bizarre body plan is one reason that at least some of us find the octopus so fascinating. Instead of keeping all of their smarts in their brain, they distribute 60% to their arms. So the arms can think for themselves. And the octopus can act fast and inventively without having to micromanage its hundreds or thousands of individually rotating suckers. If uh, the arm is lost or deliberately released, it continues to writhe and grasp and react to pain. The octopus makes do with seven until it can grow a new one. This detachable arm comes in especially handy for the tiny blanket octopus male who sends a lone arm along with his sperm packet to ensure proper delivery to his six and a half foot sweetheart. We've heard of men swearing that they would give their right arm for their beloved. These guys follow through. I have to wonder though, is it good for him? Or does the delivery arm have all the fun? <laughs> Octopus skin is crazy stuff as well. It is laced with color organs and little reflector cells like tiny mirrors that can blend with any background, whether striped, spotted, or tripping, psychedelic. Waves of color wash over some or flash out of nowhere to startle and confuse predators and prey. Quite a trick for a colorblind creature. The larger Pacific striped octopus makes for much better love stories. They mate beak to beak, suckers to suckers. And suckers would seem to be highly sensual. They can feel and taste and give hickeys. <laughs> These octopuses live together and share food. They may mate every day without ever nibbling even a sucker or two. These females survive multiple broodings. Let's hear it for love, yes! <laughs> sea turtles don't seem to be inclined to give us a hard time because they can live over 80 years. Theirs is the ultimate fantasy lifestyle, footloose free spirits who swim where the currents take them and love the ones they're with. As we get more details, however, they start to sound more like ma nature's dip children's. Their courtship seems to have come straight out of a pirate's. Playbook. The best bad news from the female perspective is that she only mates every two to eight years. That's probably how long it takes her to forget how bad the last fling was. <laughs> every year there's a big reunion of turtles who survived their birth on a particular beach. And any female who shows becomes the belle of the ball. After some harassment or lover's games, it's hard to call, the male plays Captain Hook and uses 
the claws on his front flippers to grip her shell. Once he's hooked up, he takes his sweet turtle time, hanging off her back, letting her swim for both of them and haul his sorry shell to the surface so they can breathe. <laughs> Things get really galling when the other guys realize one of their brethren's got a girl. They charge in like gangbusters trying to break the couple up. They blast them with bubbles. <laughs> bite his flippers, try and force their heads between the pair. <laughs> Some of those blaggards will even try and block the female from surfacing so the male will have to let go to breathe. Hello! Of course, turtles are not the only creatures on the edge, and it is thrilling to see the tsunami of knights in shining swimsuits charging out to save them. Families bond over beach cleanups. Kids build gizmos and bake cookies to raise money to save the reef. Divers spear invasive lionfish while chefs conspire to make those fish gourmet goodies. Activists campaign nonstop to stop the destruction. Inventors experiment with nets to see if magnets or lights or mirrors or sound or excluders or something else will keep those nets from killing the wrong creatures. All labors of love. In 1971, an oil spill in San Francisco Bay sent thousands of oily birds flocking to shore. Oily birds cannot swim or fly. They are as good as dead unless the oil is removed. At that time, nobody knew much about caring for oily birds. There was no agency, no facility, no funding, just a few officials offering sound advice. Don't touch them. The birds were diseased, crawling with vermin, stressed, and primed to fight. Like any of that would stop a Californian. <laughs> they flocked in, they gathered birds, they found methods and money and shelters and the strength to work around the clock for weeks. Most of the birds died anyway. But a movement was born over the last half century. A core of determined bird scrubbers has morphed into the international bird rescue. <coughs> Crack teams of professionals ready to hit the beach where and whenever a spill threatens wildlife. Along the way, that organization has come up with a powerful philosophy of shared responsibility. They point out that we all use the oil and benefit from it. Oil companies just stay very well-paid delivery boy. Standing around pointing fingers just gets in the way of the work that's got to be done. And the donations from the oil company the power of inclusion is huge. Whatever the challenge happens to be, if only our heroes are strong enough to use it. Horrific as the challenges we're facing look today, I have a feeling that history will dub this era the golden green age of romance when the sea seduced us into slaying her dragons by loving our neighbors. <laughs> Remember the wisdom of the octopus. Those who love live longer. <laughs>